Hey everyone, and welcome to Cethaldor's World of Warcraft Guides. This one's going to be on Druid Glyphing, Resto Druid Glyphing. And I'm going to attempt to go over PvE, PvP, and PvP team glyph setup. They'll all be kind of similar, but there will be some subtle differences that can make or break a fight. So be sure to uh, pay attention, and if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get on. going to do PvE first, and in PvE you are going to strictly focus on increasing your healing and mana longe longevity, pardon. So be sure to keep that in mind as we go through this. We have Glyph of Life Bloom, which increases Life Bloom's crit chance by 10%. Glyph of Rejuve, which increases its healing done by 10%. Glyph of Swift Mend, which causes Swift Mend to not consume your Rejuve or Regrowth Hot on the target it's cast. Now, those Hots still need to be on the target in order to cast it, however, they will not be removed by casting Swift Mend. So it's a very nice Glyph. And also, Efflorescence will still show up, assuming you took the talent as per my spec guide. Uh, regardless of whether you have this glyph or not. And finally, one more healing prime glyph, which is regrowth. The regrowth seal over time will automatically refresh its duration if the target is at or below 25% health. So, what would we pick for PvE and why? Well, Swift Mend is pretty much a staple for PvE healing because it's one of your few instant cast uh, burst heals, and also it leaves Efflorescence on the ground, it is the only ability that does that, and that is a very nice area hot. So you definitely want to grab this, that way you're not feeling limited when using Swift Mend. So definitely pick that up. Also, uh, I would say grab Rejuve, because 10% more healing done from Rejuve. Rejuve is what you use to heal party members in 5 mans and heroics, and it's going to, of course, be used in Rage to heal party members as well as you keep it up on the tanks. If you disagree with this, that's as per the blue post, but feel free to disagree in the comments below. That's what Rejuve is for, keeping the group up, coupled with Nourish, at least in a 5-man. In 5-mans on tanks, you want Life Bloom, Rejuve, sorry, and Nourish on the tank at all times possible. And because of that, I would next recommend Life Bloom, which uh, increases the critical effect of Life Bloom, both its ticks and bloom chance. So you definitely want to pick that up to help with the crits, as it is a very powerful heal on its own, but 10% more chance to crit, making it even all that more powerful, is obviously a good thing. Now, why we don't pick up Glyph of Regrowth is because in a PvE environment, the only time someone should drop below 25% health hypothetically speaking, of course, i.e. the tank ever dropping below 25% health, is if it's an expected ability that is coming in, at which point you should already be casting your large heal healing touch. So the refreshing of that hot is debatable as to whether it's going to be effective or not as far as using a prime glyph slot up, because how often is the tank going to be at or under 25% health? With any luck, not often at all. So, not exactly the most optimal glyph, but hey, if it's your cup of tea, go ahead and drink it. Next, we have our majors. Again, want to focus on healing and mana longevity and ignoring DPS-related things. So, we have Healing Touch, which, when cast Healing Touch, the cooldown on Nature Swiftness is reduced by 10 seconds. Nature Swiftness is the ability that reduces the cast time of your next Nature spell that is shorter than 10 seconds, making it instant cast, which is very, very nice, especially when you're falling behind on heals for the tank or you need to throw a quick regrowth at someone or even a Nourish, I do believe it works with. Yes, it does. So that is very nice to have up, especially with all the moving that we are having to do in fights, such as Altarius in Vortex Pinnacle, as well as multiple bosses in Stonecore. So having that instant cast up more often because you're using Healing Touch is nice. However, if you don't find yourself using Healing Touch, then you have an argument against picking this up, or if you didn't spec into Nature Swiftness, which is moderately questionable, but acceptable. Next, we have Glyph of Innervate, which is very nice. You'll be able to innervate someone else in the party and still receive 50% of the innervate's effect on yourself. 
So that's very nice for fights like Admiral Ripsnarl from Heroic Deadmines, where you just need to get him down faster. So you can throw it on, say, the Mage, who ran out of mana and his evocation is on cooldown. And you can throw it on him, still receive 50% of the effect, just enough to keep the tank up, and getting the Mage the extra mana to do the DPS he needs to do. Situations like that, Innervate is quite nice. Also in raid fights, a druid's Innervate may not be saved for himself sp specifically, sorry, but for perhaps the main tank heals, i.e. a paladin. So having that and still getting benefit from it is a very nice effect indeed. Now on the mention of raids, the next glyph is more viable in raids as per comparison to five mans. However, it is still nice in five mans if you, ha if you find yourself running with a lot of players who have pets or things like that. You have Glyph of Wild Growth, which increases the number of targets Wild Growth heals by one, so it is six instead of five. Couple that with Tree of Life form, that makes eight. So, Wild Growth healing eight people in a raid situation, that's 80% of the group being hotted by one spell. Very nice, very mana efficient for the heals per mana. So it is a nice Glyph to pick up all around. And that leaves us with the Glyph of Rebirth, which causes Rebirth to resurrect a player at 100% health. So between that and your Innervate Glyph, it works out pretty nice if you do need to Rebirth someone, because they come back with 100% health, you don't need to heal them, and if they're a mana user, you can feel free to throw your Innervate on them, and you'll still get 50% of the benefit, so you won't be outing yourself completely. As far as what I would pick for PvE, I would grab Glyph of Innervate, Glyph of Wild Growth and Glyph of Healing Touch as my personal choices. If you don't like any of those, of course I would recommend picking up Glyph of Rebirth in place of them and not something else like, say, Bark Skin. And for miners, the aesthetic one is the Treant, which makes the tree form the old one instead of the new one. Uh, and then I would simply recommend dash Mark of the Wild Unburdened Rebirth as I did for the other Druid specs, simply because Unburdened Rebirth no-brainer, it's the only good miner, Mark of the Wild, it's more important than the rest, and Dash, it's helpful for when you need to move your little booty out of there. Uh, Challenging Roar is a bear only, Typhoon, you don't even have that ability, and Aquatic Form, I haven't used Aquatic Form in at least two years. So, let's move on to PvP, BG, and Pugging spec. You're going to focus less on the mana longevity and more on the damage output bonus, if any at all. If you don't like doing damage and you just want to go into a pugged BG healing, I would say take the the PvE glyph setup with changes to the major glyphs. Leave the primes alone and, of course, ignore the miners. But if you don't want to do damage and you just want to focus on healing and healing only in a pugged BG setup, then you're going to want to listen to the minor section of this. If you want to balance yourself to be able to do damage and heal as a Resto Druid, then you're going to want to listen to the primes and majors. Now, primes at, in a PvP pug setup for a Resto Druid, you might think of Insect Swarm, which increases Insect Swarm damage by 30. Life Bloom, again, is good. Critical Chance Increase is always nice. Rejuve, again, 10% more healing, nice. Swift Mend, again, very nice. That way it doesn't eat up your hots. Uh, Moonfire, nice, because it increases the periodic damage of Moonfire. And Regrowth, much more uh, substantially viable in a any PvP scenario, I should say, because people will be dropping to and below 25% health fairly frequently, I would imagine, assuming the other team you're going against is competent. And finally, you could debate Starfire, however, it has very little use. It's not going to be uh, too optimal, in my opinion. Also, you could say Glyph of Wrath has its place, as we did pick up Fury of Stormrage in the PvP Resto Druid spec, if you followed my guide. And uh, that would be interesting, because your Wrath would be doing 20, 10 pardon, percent more damage on targets that you've insect swarmed. So, what my recommendations would be is definitely grab Swift Mend for a pugged PvP spec. That is going to be very vital, as you're going to be moving around a lot, and it's your only instant cast burst heal, with the exception of a Nature Swiftness cast. So, it's very, very good. You need Swift Mend. And then... 
if you want to focus on strictly healing, I would say grab Rejuve and then switch between Life Bloom and Regrowth Glyphs depending on your playstyle. Because the problem with Life Bloom is you can only put it on one target, whereas Regrowth and Rejuve you can put on as many targets as you want, assuming you can keep the uh, durations up. So. If you don't want to use Life Bloom Glyph, if you really want that Regrowth Glyph, replace the Life Bloom one because it's gonna it's going to have marginally more utility than the Life Bloom Glyph. However, Life Bloom 10% increased crit chance on the flag carrier in a worse on Gulch or on yourself when you're getting pounded by a bunch of guys could save a life. So it's debatable there. That would be the healing setup for healing focused Prime Glyphs. If you want some more damage focused Prime Glyphs. Uh, because you think that your spec is going to give you enough healing bonus, then I would say grab Insect Swarm and Wrath in place of Life Bloom and Rejuve, or Regrowth and Rejuve, depending on how you chose it, because the Insect Swarm 30% increased damage will be nice, and then couple that with your Wrath, which you'll be casting to get your instant Starfire proc from Fury of Storm Rage. It's just going to stack and give you an approximate 40% increased effectiveness overall, 30% from increased damage of Insect Swarm, 10% from increased damage of Wrath. If you don't like sitting there and casting, I would suggest, and this is my personal choice, if I had all the glyphs I want, would be Insect Swarm, Swift Mend, and Moonfire. Because if you have the dots doing the damage for you, that means you can focus more of your time and more of your cast time on casting spells relating to healing, and you're still pushing out damage because of the increased damage from your dots. So that would be my recommendation, is Insect Swarm, Swift Mend, and uh, Moonfire. If you don't like that, then and you still want to push out damage, you don't want to cast Moonfire, then I would say Insect Swarm, Wrath, Swift Mend, and if you want to focus completely on healing, then go Swift Mend, Rejuve, and Regrowth or Life Bloom, depending on playstyle. Now, here are the major glyphs for Pug PvP glyphing. Now, this one is going to help you with your survivability as far as the tiers of glyphs are what they're contributing, that is. So, you definitely want to uh, be careful in what you pick here. If you, again, don't care about survivability and you just want to focus on improving your heals, then I would suggest stick with what you have for the PvE with the exception of the Innervate Glyph, which is easily changeable to something that helps with your survivability, simply because you shouldn't be having to Innervate in a BG. You'll either die too soon, or you'll get it done and be safe. Also, you wouldn't Innervate someone else, you'd Innervate yourself, so the Glyph is really uh, devalued in a PvP pug situation. So, I would say, for survivability increase, you definitely want to look at Glyph of Entangling Roots, which makes it an instant cast, but provides it a cooldown. However, keep in mind that your Tree of Life form makes your Entangling Roots an instant cast also. So, if you find yourself only needing it when things get really rough, you can depend on your Tree of Life form to make it instant. Or, if you find yourself wanting to use it more often, instantly, then I would say pick up the Glyph. I personally pick up the Glyph when I go PvP Resto. Glyph of Entangling Roots, that is. Uh, Healing Touch has its place, however, keep in mind that it is almost a 3 second cast with my haste, and I am heroic ready. It is currently... Oh, my bad, it's under 2.5 seconds with my spec right now, however, this is a PvE spec at the moment. But anyway, uh, it takes a moderate amount of time to cast, so the concern there is you won't have enough time to stand still and cast that in order to get the benefit of reducing nature's swiftness cooldown. So if you think you will have enough time and you find yourself with enough time, by all means pick it up. However, be wary that it may not be as useful as you might be predicting. Another good glyph to look at would be Thorns, as Thorns does do a comparable amount of damage when a melee attacker is on you, more specifically a rogue or a one-handed fury warrior as they attack so fast. Uh, glyph of Wild Growth, not a bad idea for the larger BGs, but uh, it's debatable whether you're ever going to have more than four other people around you or not. If it's like an AV, then yeah, that'll help out a lot. If it's a worse on Gulch, eh, probably not. So definitely devalued in a pugged PvP situation there. 
I would say Bark Skin is definitely a nice one, as it reduces the chance they have to create you by 25%, as well as doing whatever Bark Skin normally does, which I believe is increased DR by 20%, as well as it prevents spell pushback, and it's usable while stunned, incapacitated, etc. So definitely a nice glyph there to look at for survivability increase. Rebirth, uh, bad idea. If you're b resing in a BG, then uh, it's probably not going well for you if you have to resort to that. Uh, sometimes if you have the time to do that, then go for it, but it shouldn't be too hard to throw a couple hops on him and walk away. Keep in mind this is a pug. You can only feel so much remorse for those you don't know. So, in your majors, I personally would recommend and take for myself Major Glyph of Entangling Roots, Major Glyph of... Bark skin and Major Glyph of Thorns. That helps me with survivability in two locations, Bark Skin and Instant Cast and Tingling Roots, and it helps me push out some damage when I'm getting pounded on with Thorns. All the more incentive for that rogue to get off me and stop stunlocking me, right? And finally, Miners. Kitty Form Dash has its time to shine in this glyph setup, as going Kitty Form Dash is definitely going to be more helpful here than in any PvE scenario, because it helps get away from things. Also, Mark of the Wild has more viability in a PvP spec of any kind, simply because dispels are more likely to happen in a PvP scenario compared to PvE. And finally, Unburdened Rebirth. In the event that you do need to use Rebirth in a Pugged BG, which can save a life, your life more specifically, depending on who you Rebirth, then it is nice to not have to use the Reagent for it. Also, Aquatic Form... You could debate that if you do a lot of ABs, but that's really stretching it. As far as the other three, uh, you don't use that ability, you don't have that ability, and that is cosmetic, therefore useless. So, my setup for a Pug PvP Glyph setup would be, starting from Primes and going down, Glyph of Insect Swarm, Glyph of Swiftmend, Glyph of Moonfire, Majors, Glyph of Entangling Roots, Glyph of Thorns, Glyph of Barkskin, Miners, Glyph of Dash, Glyph of Mark of the Wild, Glyph of Unburdened Rebirth. Now, for the PvP team setup, this is this is referring to BG teams and arena teams. Keep that in mind. That means you are coordinated and know what each other is doing and have some form of communication. And in the case of a BG, you should have been split up into subgroups so you know who you are assigned to primarily heal and then off heal as you can. If your BG group does not have that kind of coordination, maybe it's something to look into. Now, for this, you are going to focus less on doing damage because you have other people there to do that for you. Your job is primarily to heal them and increase survivability of yourself and everyone around you. So, it's going to devalue the DPS glyphs and increase the value of the survivability glyphs. Longevity is debatable as far as mana goes, depending on how your fights seem they go. Arena longevity is more important than BG longevity. So, what we are going to look at for Prime Glyph Premades is going to be Glyph of Life Bloom, Rejuve, Swift Mend, Regrowth, of course, the usual, uh, Moonfire, and Insect Swarm. I would not suggest sitting there and casting Wrath as that makes you too delicious of a target to interrupt. The bonus to being a Resto Druid in a PvP scenario is the fact that a lot of your heals come from being instantly cast. So, you're going to want to have the Glyph of Rejuve, absolutely, and the Glyph of Swiftmend, absolutely. Because the Rejuve should be on everyone at all times that you have the mana for, assuming everyone is taking damage. And the Glyph of Swiftmend, again, helps with your Efflorescence, and you don't have to keep recasting Rejuve on the folks that you cast Swiftmend on. So those two are vital for a pre-made BG Glyph setup. And the final one is debatable on Life Bloom, which you will most likely be casting on yourself or whoever is getting Focus Fired down. Insect Swarm and Moonfire are also debatable in those in case you like to do damage. However, I would recommend Regrowth, as that Hot being refreshed by itself saves you more GCD, more cast time. The less times you have to sit through a cast time, the better in a PvP scenario, because you need to be ready to move, and you need to be ready to avoid interrupts. So if it's resetting itself, it's fantastic. You're going to want to grab it. 
So my personal recommendation for a pre-made Resto Druid PvP setup for Prime Glyphs would be Glyph of Rejuve, Glyph of Swiftmend, and Glyph of Regrowth. As for miners, you're going to want to pick up Glyph of Entangling Roots as you cannot depend specifically on your Tree of Life form to get that instant cast Entangling Roots. Entangling Roots, in this case, will not just be saving your own ass, it could be saving your friend's ass who has too many people on him. So you want to be ready to throw Regrowth out, or sorry, entangling, entangling Roots out where it needs to be and say, hey, move. After that, you are going to want to look at uh, thorns and bark skin again would be very viable, especially if someone is getting stunlocked by a rogue. Thorns would be a deterrent from him doing damage. More specifically, if you are, then bark skin will be excessively helpful in helping you survive. Uh, healing touch again would be nice, except do you really have the time to sit there for two and a half seconds to cast something without expecting to be interrupted or having to move? If you do, if your team is that good, which I am not saying no one is, there are some teams out there which are ridiculously good, and the healer can sit there and just heal away like that. If your team is that good, absolutely take this glyph. This glyph can save so much so much health and have you ready to go uh, because of it speeds up the nature swiftness. But if your team is not good enough at saving the healer from getting beaten on while he's casting or avoiding interrupts, then avoid this glyph. If you have a really good team, then go ahead and pick it up. So Entangling Roots, definitely Healing Touch, depending on the level of your group play. Uh, thorns, again, deterrent for someone getting beat on. Bark Skin can save you. Uh, rebirth you cannot use in arenas and therefore is debunked. So that leaves Wild Growth as an option. If you're doing arenas, I would say don't pick it up, as in arenas the most you can have is 5v5 so 5 is plenty it's a waste of a prime in bg pre-mades depending on what pre-made it is it's debatable whether you want that or not if you are split into subgroups it can be very helpful such as one healer per four other people sorry one healer per five people in a warsong gulch i.e two teams one d one o wild growth could be very nice especially if you're on d because you can hit everyone with it as well as a pet, or if you're all clumped together and say you have a 3D70 build, then definitely Wild Growth Glyph would be helpful. So it depends on whether you're organized enough and which BG you're doing, such as an AB, increasing the number of targets it can hit is very much more helpful than in a Warsong Gulch, because you're more likely to run into six people being in one spot versus seeing that in a Warsong Gulch. So it depends on what your team is like and where you are uh, running, essentially, as far as whether you want that or not. So I would say definitely take Bark Skin, definitely take Glyph of Entangling Roots, and after that it is your choice between Thorns, Healing Touch, and Wild Growth. I would stay away from Glyph of Innervate, because again, in a PvP scenario, you would be innervating yourself, not someone else, and therefore the Glyph becomes a waste. I would say Thorns is less valuable than Wild Growth or Healing Touch, so I would say debate between those two based on your play style. So as a summary, I would say Entangling Roots, Bark Skin, and then Healing Touch or Wild Growth depending on play style. That would be my choices. Finally, Miners, Dash Mark of the Wild, Unburdened Rebirth. I know Unburdened Rebirth is going to be completely useless in a arena situation, however, nothing else in the Miners would be useful in that place. So... There you have it. Miners are miners. They suck. Uh, that's that. This has been Glyphing, Resto Druid Glyphing, with Cethaldor of Blade's Edge in the Guild Sacrilege on the character Taladorna. If you need clarification or specification on anything that was talked about in this video, please let me know either in a private message or in the comment section below, or even on a comment on my channel. Thank you for watching. Can't wait to put another one out for you. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this, and thumb up or thumb down. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the support. And again, I can't wait to put another one out for you. See ya.